Howdy y'all. I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are safe and I hope you guys are healthy. Before I get into the video, I wanted to recognize a milestone that this channel has actually hit. The day this video comes out is going to be just about the one year anniversary of me posting a video on YouTube about clothing. I am so very, very, very thankful for anybody who has ever watched a video of mine, any new subscribers, old subscribers. I really appreciate you all. I've met some of the most amazing people that I've ever met through this channel and it has been, the growth has been unexpected to say the least. I appreciate you guys. I hope my content continues to entertain you and hopefully maybe teach you a thing or two. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much. It's all because of you guys. I'm nothing without the people that watch me. So thank you guys so very much from the bottom of my heart. One year and I'm planning to continue going strong. If you guys ever have any suggestions or videos that you wanna see from me, feel free to throw them in the comments below of any video and I'll be more than happy to at least consider them. But moving on from that, today I'm bringing you a video where I talk about clothes that I've bought, I've bought recently, upgrades that I've thankfully been able to make to my wardrobe. Super excited to show this to you guys and, sh and talking about some clothes that I'm going to be wearing this summer. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Got a couple of new things in, super excited about, super happy to incorporate into my wardrobe. Um, I'm in a position where I'm fortunate enough to be able to make these upgrades and I just wanted to say right up front, I wanted to kind of throw in a good mixture of things, whether that be really expensive quote unquote luxury items to like more mid tier or like lesser known brands and a vintage piece in here actually. So. I hope there's something in here for everybody, but that's enough of me rambling. The first item that I wanted to show you guys is actually going to be a jacket that um, I got recently. It's not really all that useful for summer, especially here in Vegas. It gets ridiculously hot, but just to get it out of the way, I wanted to show you guys this jacket because this is very quickly one of my favorite jackets at the moment. And this jacket is from who is J. Cove, or I don't know if he's rebranding to just J. Cove. Jacob Wallace on YouTube, I'm sure many of you guys have heard of him and seen him and watch him, but this is his jacket that he came out with maybe, I wanna say a month ago? I'm not entirely sure, but it is a beautiful, beautiful jacket. It is a object dye jacket, so I'm assuming this jacket started off as white. You can kind of see some white undertones underneath, and then the entire jacket was just thrown into dye, and the dye, as you can tell from the texture of this piece, doesn't really completely take, so it's, it's not really black. It is more so of like grays with, I'm not sure if you can see, the saturation of dye is pretty uneven, but you can also see on the chest here it has kind of very minimal graphic right there. Right over here on the collar, you can see a Cobrax style button. I'm not entirely sure if that is actually a Cobrax button, but it is a Cobrax style button. You have this pull tab right here that was obviously put in the die as well. And just seeing the paneling throughout the item, it is honestly really impressive. You got two pockets up front here that actually have that same Cobrax uh, button closure. But what really kind of makes this jacket shine is going to be, there's a detachable hood. I'm not a particular fan of wearing hoods. I actually prefer more kind of like mock neck, turtleneck type of looks. So we have this right here. And here is the hood of the jacket itself that I removed. Equally as cool, but my hair doesn't really work well with hoods, so I wear it with kind of just like the mock neck turtleneck thing going on. Other details to show about this jacket, it doesn't only have the two pockets in the front, but it also has the back, what they call a backpack pocket. There is one larger compartment, one smaller compartment, and it has zipper closures with this kind of, there you go, little aglets right there. And what I actually wanted to kind of highlight to show that this is an object dyed garment 
if I flip open the zipper right here, you can kind of see what the actual like fading of the colors are. So on the outside, it actually had dyed it a little bit darker into the grays, but then if you flip open the zipper, you can kind of see the whites. Absolutely love this piece. And it actually, it's weird that a jacket released in the summer, but I'm super, super happy to have it. It retailed for 180 and for a jacket like this, it's actually really cool. It doesn't keep me all that warm. It's not like a padded jacket. It's not a down jacket. However, it is one that is pretty good as like a windbreaker. So next up, I'm going to be going over clothing that I'm going to be wearing this summer. And there's a couple of things that I'll actually exclude from this video because I feel like they're kind of just givens. Of course, wearing t-shirts, vintage tees, thinner t-shirts is just kind of something that everybody wears for the summer. Or like summer shirts like these, like Revere collar shirts are kind of just a given as well, or linen shirts. But I wanted to show you guys some things that had a little bit more interesting aspects, things you could play around with a little bit more, and that's both pants and shoes. So, first pant up is going to be one that I'm sure a lot of people have seen recently. This is going to be the Wrangler Rancher 82 BK is kind of the model number. Uh, I think 82 is the model number and BK is the color because I also have a brown pair that's the 82 BN and that's going to be the brown one but nevertheless this is going to be a fully polyester flared pant. If you're not used to flared pants I would very highly suggest this pair just because they are so very like affordable and a lot of other people have done um, reviews and stuff on this exact pair of pants uh, what comes to mind is um, my friend XR on uh, Instagram he his blog between the scenes has done an entire review and discussion on his blog so definitely check that out but if you want to see a little bit more of a video format I would suggest going to Brave New Wear Show my friend Christian he does an amazing kind of all-encompassing video on the Wrangler Rancher but this one is a very nice like nice and high waisted pant that since it's polyester very breathable looks very western sits over shoes extremely well if i have a fit pic on my instagram i'll definitely throw it up right here but this is the yep, the first pant the wrangler rancher really will only run you i guess an average of like 30 bucks so kind of a no-brainer for me so next one that is up is going to be this pair right here. This is a pair of Rick Owens Berlin Sweats. I love this so very, very much. Another one that I have had my eyes on for a really long time but didn't want to pull the trigger because they are rather expensive. These ones costed me about $400 and they are super, super thin. I don't know if you can really tell but I'm gonna go ahead and try and show you how thick this material is not really working out all that well honestly but it is super super thin cotton super stretchy it has a slight i wouldn't call it a drop crotch it's not really all that dramatic uh the rise is about 13 inches which if you just wear it high rise on your waist it just looks kind of like a really nice pair of sweatpants with the rick owens drawstring hanging down but yeah a nice very thin pair of sweatpants is definitely what I'm going to be wearing this summer. Looks great with sneakers as well as derbies, which derbies are usually the way I go in summer or that I think I'm going to go this summer just because I love derbies so much and I have a couple of really good ones to show you later on in the video. So next up is going to be a pair that I this has been like my go-to as of late. I haven't had a lot of time with the Berlin sweats, but the pair that I wear honestly most often as it's heating up is going to be this pair of pants right here. And this pair of pants happens to be from Arcteryx. Call it Techwear, call it Gorpcore, whatever you want to call it, this pair of pants is so dope. It is called the Arcteryx Leafroy pants and they are absolutely amazing. They're super, super thin. Cool. And breaking down the materials that this is made of, it is 86% nylon, 14% elastine for the most part. And my goodness, do they fit so well. They are just a nice kind of straight leg, ever so slight flare at the bottom, but it's predominantly just mostly a straight leg pant. 
It doesn't have any back pockets, but it does have the two front pockets you can see there. And then beneath the right front pocket is going to be a zipper pocket right here. And then at the bottom of this zipper pocket has the Arcteryx branding right there. Really, really good pair of pants. And my favorite aspect of it is that it actually has a detached belt right there and you can just adjust that to your waist so they are actually pretty forgiving i got these in a size 32 32 i have a picture on my instagram that i'll throw up right over here it looks absolutely amazing they are kind of loud when you walk they kind of have that that swishing sound whenever you walk but the comfort the stretchability it is just a really really good pants and they actually are they don't really break the bank on Arcteryx I believe they are about 120 bucks and so for a pant like this that I can wear all summer the super super thin super comfortable and stretchy I think it's well worth it and Arcteryx is kind of having a moment right now which is always nice too the lighting is changing a whole lot it looks like there's a lot of clouds that are going in and out so sorry about the lighting next pair of pants that i wanted to show you guys is from a brand this is one that i got actually very recently and this is from a youtuber that i'm sure a lot of you guys know owen hyatt started a different brand from his previous one his previous was colette hyatt and now he's doing samar i don't know if that's how you pronounce it but samar by owen hyatt and these this company has so far produced three items in general two pairs of pants, one pair of pants that is like brown, one pair of pants that's black, and then a vest that's inspired by like a flotation device. And I got the pants, I got both of them. I'm gonna show you guys the brown one just because it's easier to show the details. This right here is such a good pant. What I really, really enjoy about it is that it has the upper, uh, I guess, ruching, if you wanna call it that, and the drawstring, very reminiscent of Rick Owens items and then we have in place of a d-ring I, I don't really know what to call it but I'm gonna go ahead and call it its own d-ring which is really great for my keys fits perfectly and it makes it very secure then we got these right here which are just regular pockets up top on both sides of course little detail on this one there's a little like flap for this pocket and it really makes a big difference just because this little flap makes it that much easier for you to put your hand in and it helps things from like popping out of your pocket as well. We have kind of cargo pockets beneath that pocket right there with leather detailing. We have little rivets right over here that is kind of reminiscent of a work pant, like a carpenter pant. Over at the knee, we have nice like darting and knee articulation to kind of help with flexibility. We have a seam that runs all the way down to the bottom. And lastly, actually maybe not lastly, but next up we have this right here where you can alter the fit of the pant if you don't want it to, because normally without it kind of bunched up, it looks more like a, a flared pant. But if you wanted a little bit more tapered, if you wanted to give it a little bit more interesting silhouette, you can kind of take this, and this is Velcro, so do that, and make it more of a slimmer opening. Super, super great. I love it so very much. Right over here, we have the back pockets that also have those leather tassels as well as silver zipper is right over there they are super super soft super great for the actual summer as far as material that it's made of it is 97 percent cotton and three percent spandex and here is the tag i got a size 32 i'm normally a size 32 and they fit me great they fit me just like a just a hair long i mean like just a tad bit if my if my shoes have any heel to them then it like prevents them from dragging on the ground but i'm not the tallest individual i'm about five nine um usually get about a 30 inch inseam is kind of like my true to size so these i would say just run a little bit long for a guy who's five nine they're also quite thin so i'm super excited to pull them out in the summer i think they'll be absolutely perfect and then let me just very quickly show you guys the other pair that i have here and it is just the same exact pant 
in black. The only difference is being, obviously, it's all black. And the tassels on the the tassels on the pockets are in a black little, like, very thin leather as well. But other than that, they're the same exact pants. And last but certainly not least, we're moving on to the last part of the video, which is going to be shoes. I have three shoes to show you here. I'm going to start off with the vintage pair, and then I'm going to move on into the more luxury pair. The first one is going to be a boot that I got off of eBay for about $45. Super, super cheap. And they are an amazing, amazing boot. They are the, they are a pair of Fry boots. You can see kind of the branding over here on the heel. Fry boots that... I really, all I did to find these was just look up Western zipper boots and these came, and sorted it from lowest price to highest and this very soon showed up. So yeah, Fry Western boots. It kind of has like a more like a little bit of a wider almond toe shape. On bottom we have a rubber bottom here as well and then a uh, leather top portion here I usually prefer uh, I might go to my tailor and actually get a rubber top here I don't like the uh, leather sole just because I end up sliding around if I'm walking around on like carpet or anything that isn't concrete or rough I'll end up sliding with this type of toe but there is front paneling so there is this front portion a seam that goes up here and then down the side. This very much reminds me of a Saint Laurent um, harnessless Wyatt boot, which is the exact reason why I bought this. Um, it has a zipper on the side to help me get in and out, and then it has kind of this elastic at the top right here, which splits so that it doesn't really bother my upper uh, shin. So, yeah. It has about a two inch heel right here, or 40, 40 millimeters. Uh, it is a great pair of boots. I very much love them and for the price that I purchased them for, it's just, you know, a no brainer. So yeah, Re I guess you would call it a cheap alternative to a Saint Laurent Wyatt. Next up is going to be, oh man, so if you know me personally, you know I wear derbies all the time, almost every day. Derbies are boots almost every single day. And I have two new derbies to show you guys that I got great deals on, I'm super happy with them, and honestly, they're the same model. They're both from Guidi. First one I'm gonna show you is this one right here. This is the Guidi 992 Derby. It has leather laces, as you can see up front. They kinda look a little ratty at the moment. These are not brand new. Uh, you can see the branding on the inside of the heel, if it'll show. I'm not entirely sure if it will show. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is a gray derby. You can kind of see on the toe, it has a little bit of distressing. It's like a suede gray derby. And then on bottom, I have Vibram soles on there as well. For longevity. This pair, I absolutely love. You can't go wrong with Guidi at all. Guidi shoes in general are just some of the best leathers used. Honestly, they look so good with both slimmer and wide pants. And I got these in a 42 and a half. They do fit a little big on me because I'm normally a regular uh, 42 or size 9 US, but I love them nonetheless. They are so, so great. Next up and lastly, it is a pair of black Guidi 992. 992, I, sounds like I'm saying a New Balance model. 992, great derby. It's black, but I'm not sure if the camera will be able to pick it up. In some spots, it's black, and in other spots, especially towards the ankle, it's actually brown. So the toe is more so black, the upper is kind of brown, which I really like the color differences. And what I really like about this pair is that this is one that has extra long laces. So what I do is I actually wrap them around the bottom here. Because this portion is raised, it doesn't bother the shoelaces here. So there is very little to no chance of them getting cut. And I think it makes for a more interesting looking derby. Of course, there is branding on the sole here. I'm not sure if they'll be able to catch because it's so dark in there. 
but I got these in a 42 and they fit me true to size and they fit perfect for me. I know some people like to go up a size in Guidi's. Uh, for this one, I stuck true to size and I don't know if you caught it earlier, but I did go to my cobbler and throw a Vibram sole on here, Vibram lug sole. And honestly, the added traction and the added height to it will be amazing for longevity and I am just so very happy. I think this one's probably gonna be the one that's gonna get the most use out of all the shoes that I showed you today, just because of the grip and the color. All black shoes, all black derbies are kind of a no-brainer for me. But uh, yeah, so that's just about all the shoes that I had to show you guys today. That's about everything that I'm going to be showing you. So I showed you guys some pants, that I'm going to be wearing this summer as well as some shoes. Let me know what you guys think about my pickups. I appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you guys, it's been a year of doing this and honestly I would love nothing more than to continue doing this in the future. So if you have any ideas, throw them in the comments below. If you have anything that you'd like to see from me, let me know. Thank you guys so, so very much. I appreciate you all and until my next video, I'll catch you guys later. Oh, and little bit of a sneak peek. I think the next one that I'm going to be putting out is a DIY because I haven't done one in a very long time. But have a great day guys. I'll catch you guys later.